Good, you're back. I'm Neom, and today's episode is about NIMS. Please subscribe, we're so close to a thousand, and remember to leave a like. The word of the day is petrichor. Let's say that again, petrichor. That's a good sounding word, but what it describes is even better. Petrichor refers to the oddly specific smell that comes after rain. Although 10 minutes of research wasn't quite enough for me to figure out why it smells more strongly around pavement or asphalt. Petrichor. Anyway, enough about that. Let's get into it. The suffix nim or onim comes from the Greek onimon, onimos, onoma, or onima, all of which are derivations of the word for name. So whenever you see one of these words, you can look at it as a word telling you the type of name something has. Take scared and afraid, for example. These are considered synonyms. The sin part of that coming from the Greek sun, meaning with. Combine that with onima, and you get synonymon, and eventually synonym. Translated directly, it means with name. Okay, I'll admit I don't really get that one. Let's try another example. Completely automated public Turing test to tell computers and humans apart. Hmm, a little long, don't you think? Let's just shorten that a bit. Why did they decide to leave out this entire section in the middle? I don't know, but that's not the point. Focus up. This is called an acronym. Essentially, when you take the first letter of all or most of the words in a long name to shorten it. This word is derived from akron, which is of course Greek again, and means end or tip. Throw the onym on there and you get end word. Yeah, not really seeing that one either. Okay, I'll try one more and if this doesn't work, I give up. Mark Twain is an example of a pseudonym. Pseudo, coming from the Greek suedes or sudes or suedes or something, means false. Considering that Mark Twain's real name was Samuel Langhorn Clemens, we finally found one that makes sense. Okay, let's look at some other nims. A few others that you've probably heard of would be antonym, words that have opposite meanings, such as up and down, push and pull, or baseball and sport. Hey, don't be mad at me, I didn't write the dictionary. Another is homonym, words that are spelled and pronounced the same, but have a different meaning, such as can and can, or ring and ring. A quick aside, just in case you didn't know the difference between that and a homograph or homophone, Here's how you tell. Homographs are words that are spelled the same but have different pronunciation. You can remember that because graph is a visible thing. Homophones are words that sound the same but have different meaning. Moving on. Some more obscure ones are hydronym, the name of a specific body of water, Pacific Ocean, or Lake Michigan. The type of body isn't the hydronym, just the other part. Mononym is cool. A single name that a famous person is known by, such as Michelangelo. His full name was Michelangelo di Lodovico Buonarroti Simoni. But since he is really only known by Michelangelo, that would be a mononym. Other examples would be Madonna. Is that even a real name? Prince. Or the artist whose mononym would formerly have been Prince. Caesar. Which one? Who knows? Or Neom. What's my full name? I'm not sure. I haven't written that part of the lore yet. Retronym. A word that has been modified to account for new technology, developments, or circumstances. British English is a retronym because once Australian and American English began to diverge, it was necessary to differentiate. I think World War I would be considered a retronym because they would have renamed it after the sequel came out. It's pretty clear they weren't planning on a second one. There are a hundred other words ending in nim, but you have all you need to get by and can even create your own. Like if you wanted to come up with a word for adjectives used specifically to describe bowls. Just take the ancient Greek, toss a nim on the end, and you've got bialonym. You could do cinnamonym, words for food containing cinnamon, like apple cider or French toast. Or similarly, sentimentonym, words that are used in sentiment, like love or longing. Emonym, words that describe both people with black lipstick and chocolate. Neomonym, words and phrases that have been invented by Neom, like Neomonym, or Neom's turkey baster. Write your own nim word in the comments, and I'll give it a rating out of 10. If you enjoyed this video, leave a like, subscribe for more content, ring the bell to be notified about new videos, and comment what you want to learn about next. I'm Neom, and I'll see you next time.